Hello and welcome to part two of my video in which I discuss the parallels between Zionism and the doctrine of Balaam. In part one, I looked at all the instances where we read about Balaam in the New Testament and how this doctrine of Balaam was linked to Jezebel and to the um, destruction of her children as described in Revelation 3. Now, besides the scriptures in Revelation, we also saw Peter and Jude write about Balaam. And the gist of what they said is Balaam, um, his error was due to wanting um, reward, physical reward money for his efforts. So he was a hireling. And that is what we are going to see today when we look at the actual story of Balaam in the Old Testament. Um, and how he was a hireling. And then we will look at how the oracles of Balaam very closely correspond to the um, tenets of Christian and Z Jewish Zionism today. Now, the story of Balaam and Balak that we are going to read um, is in Numbers 22 to 24. And I'm actually going to read that all those chapters before but I will put video chapters in the description box below so that if you know your Bible very well and you do not need to go through this reading with me you can just skip um, via the video chapter to the place that where I continue after reading this so that you do not need to go through all that but for the rest of you, we will be reading um, starting in Numbers 22. The revelation we receive um, comes from the effort we put in, in understanding the scriptures and comparing scripture with scripture. It isn't just given to us. That is how false doctrine starts. It is by people repeating things that, they hear other people say. This is exactly what the story of Balaam illustrates, how he prophesied and how they ran with that prophecy and it was repeated over and over and how destruction came upon Israel and eventually on Balaam and also, of course, on Balak, uh, who was the king, the son of the king, who was the son of the king of Moab. So let us read thee. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side Jordan by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw that all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said, unto the elders of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messages before unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth and they abide over against me. Therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I heard that he whom you blessed is blessed and he whom you have cursed is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hands. And they came unto Balaam and spoke unto him the words of Balak. So there already we see that Balaam is a hireling and he wants um, the rewards for being a diviner. He's going to be offered that by this king um, who wants... Israel cursed so that he can prevail over them. And he said to them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak to me. 
and the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me, saying, Behold, these are people come out of Egypt, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes, more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus said Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote you to very great honor, and I will do whatever you say unto me. Come therefore, I pray you, curse me this people. So now we see not only is Balaam being offered um, money, financial reward, but also a position, a position of honor. And Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, tarry you also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise up, go with them, but yet the word which I shall say to you, that you shall do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place, where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because you have mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill you? And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not your ass upon which you have ridden ever since I was yours unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto you? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore have you smitten your ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand you, because your way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain you and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease you, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I speak unto you, that you will speak. So Balaam went to the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of 
Ornum, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto you to call you? Wherefore came you not to me? Am I not able indeed to promote you to honor? And Balaam said to Balak, Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God put in my mouth, that I shall speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kiriathuzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. Balaam's first oracle. And Balaam said to Balak, Build me ye seven altars, and prepare me ye seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Her adventure the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he shows me I will tell you. And he went to a high place. And God met Balaam, and he said to him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus you will speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak the king of Moab has brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob. And come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I defy whom God has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like the year. And Balak said unto Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take ye to speak that which the Lord has put in my mouth? Balaam's second oracle. And Balaam said unto him, Come, I pray you, with me to another place, from where you may see them. You shall see but the utmost part of them, and shall not see them all, and curse me them from there. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by the burnt offering while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again to Balak and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What has the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, you son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall not do it, or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What has God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat the prey 
and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said to Balak, Didn't I tell you, saying, All that the Lord speaks, that must I do? And Balak said to Balaam, Come, I pray you, I will bring you unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that you may curse me them from there. And Balak brought Balaam to the top of Peor that looked towards Yeshimon. And Balaam said to Balak, Build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Balaam's third oracle. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face towards the wilderness. And Balaam lifted his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, He has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, and your tabernacles, O Israel! As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of lime aloes which the Lord has planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that bless you, and cursed is he that curse you. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore, now flee you to your place. I thought to promote you with great honor, but lo, the Lord has kept you back from honor. And Balaam said to Balak, Spoke I not also to your messengers which you sent to me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord, to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what the Lord said, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto my people, and I will advertise you what this people shall do to your people in the later days. Balaam's Final Oracle And he took up this parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remains of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenites and took up this parable and said, Strong is your dwelling place, and you put your nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until Asher shall carry you away captive. And he took up this parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? And the ships shall come from the coast of Kittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. 
And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place. And Balak also went his way. Now, I also just want to read the first part of Numbers 25, which shows what happens after this story of Balaam and Balak. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. So Balak is the king of Moab, and now we find this um, fornication with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself to Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled. And then it goes on to tell how there actually came a plague upon the people and many died. And you can read the rest yourself of what happened with Phineas and how the actions of Phineas stayed the plague. Um, but even so, there were 24,000 people that died in the plague. So what I want to point out is after the whole story with false prophet Balaam, who spoke just what the Lord said. I want to point that out. He did prophesy truth, but he is a hireling. And there were words put in his mouth which would lead to the destruction, firstly in Israel, um, and then later on it prophesies how um the enemies of Israel would be destroyed by this prophecy of Balaam, the doctrine of Balaam. It would lead to destruction. Now, all these things we read can make endless studies. So we're going to have to take a bird's eye view so that it doesn't take hours and hours and we get lost in all the little details because there is so much about this. So what I'm going to do is show you how these oracles of Balaam match the doctrine of Zionism. And that will show you that the doctrine of Christian Zionism is the doctrine of Balaam. And that should actually cause fear and trembling in our hearts because this false prophet, this hireling, spoke the words of the Lord, yet he was able to bring destruction. You will notice that the Lord didn't want Balaam to make this, this um, divination. And when he persisted and when he wanted to do this, the Lord put words in his mouth that led to destruction, not only in Israel, but also their enemies.